Knowing the grim prognosis of gliomas, how do you manage a patient with a suspected or definitively diagnosed high-grade astrocytoma, that is a grade 3 to grade 4 astrocytoma? If a patient presents with significant disability or an MRI that discloses significant brain edema, mass effect, and or shift, start dexamethasone, 4 to 6 milligrams, PO, every 6 hours, although it can also be given IV. This often will help manage presenting symptoms. Initiate anticonvulsants. Currently, oral levetiracetam at 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice a day is popular. Phenytoin, however, has been a gold standard for decades. Refer the patient to a neurosurgeon. When following up with the patient after surgery, realize that they will be shell-shocked, confused, and terrified. They will often not have fully digested all that was discussed with them during the hospitalization. Help guide them to appropriate radiation medicine and oncology follow-up appointments. Try to offer a notion of help. That is, acknowledge that the prognosis is poor, but that individual responses to the disease and its treatments can vary tremendously, and that some high-grade astrocytoma patients actually survive for many years. Acknowledge, however, that it's important to prepare for a more challenging course, that is, to get one's affairs in order. Involve family members in all discussions and educational efforts whenever possible. Be on the lookout for depression. It's almost a given. If this is at all a concern, go ahead and start SSRI medications and refer the patient for counseling. Investigate if there are brain tumor support groups in your area. This can be of significant help. Also, realize that family members may be profoundly affected as well, and they may need supportive help. After surgery, patients often come to you still on corticosteroid medications, usually dexamethasone. This is generally maintained throughout their radiation treatments. After radiation, seek to minimize steroid dosage as much as possible. Total elimination may prove impossible if the patient becomes symptomatic with increasing headaches or neurologic deficits or cognitive difficulties. Try to taper down steroid dosage, however, whenever possible. Do this over two or more weeks. Be aware that the patient will be adrenal suppressed from long-term treatment and may require stress doses if they become ill or require procedures. Suspect hypoadrenal crisis if a patient presents with a high fever and a diminished sensorium, that is, a decrease in their level of consciousness. Seek endocrinology support if in any doubt about the steroid management. Continue anticonvulsants indefinitely, as the patient has an intrinsic brain tumor that will act as a constant irritant to the surrounding brain tissue. If the patient presents with breakthrough seizures, obtain anticonvulsant levels if available and consider increasing their dose or adding another medication or changing medications. Encourage the patient to remain active and involved. Poor neuropsychological status correlates with less optimal survivals. Encourage healthy eating, exercise, and mental activities. Obtain surveillance MRIs of the brain every three to four months, looking for evidence of recurrence. Generally. A patient will do well for many months with no evidence of tumor recurrence. Then, seemingly out of the blue, they rapidly develop signs and symptoms. Or, a surveillance MRI demonstrates a definitive tumor recurrence. Even with aggressive intervention for tumor recurrence, it's important to initiate end-of-life discussions and consult end-of-life specialists and support systems. Generally, upon recurrence, disease progression is rapid, no matter the intervention. Nonetheless, the patient should be reevaluated by neurosurgery, radiation oncology, and medical oncology for potential treatment. Definitely reinitiate dexamethasone at the lowest possible levels to assist with symptoms. Over time, many signs and symptoms can be held at bay with increasing doses of dexamethasone. Eventually, however, the patient will inexorably deteriorate. 
Withdrawal of steroids at this time generally results in a rapid and painless decline of coma and death. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.